Hi everybody, my name is Jim and welcome back to another episode of The Lake Effect Gardener. So I've got all of these chilies that I have harvested. Okay, if you saw my tomato canning video, you saw them on, you know, next to the sink in the kitchen. So that's what today's project is going to be, but this is gonna kind of be like a chili chat, so to speak. Not a gardening video, no. But again, the weather has just been, uh, it's been very moody. The heats today, I mean, we've had a heat index up towards 100 degrees and it's just really, really humid. It's just just bad. It's. I tried getting out earlier this morning to do a garden video and it was just, it was too muggy and it was just, it was kind of gross outside. So <clears throat> I thought I'm just going to cut my losses and do this video. This was actually going to be for a make do Monday, but I thought, why not? <clears throat> It's something I can get it out to you guys without any problem. I'm going to try my hardest this next coming week to try to get a August tour out to you. Since I do my tours at the end of the month, I just wanted to, you know, squeeze that in. And August is really, I can't believe next week is September. It blows my mind. But yeah, the weather's just been ugh, and we're supposed to get more rain tomorrow and then the next day and then the next day and <sighs> yeah, August has, has really, I mean, the weather in general, you're hearing it from every other YouTuber who, who does gardening. It's just been, it's just been yuck, you know, there's just, there's no getting around it. Yesterday I tried getting out to do some stuff. I, I wanted to get a lot of uh, like herbs and things harvested and bundled and into the kitchen to dry and everything like that. I got quite a bit taken care of. I'm now looking at, you know, collecting my seeds for my flowers and as I, as I deadhead and things like that. And then yesterday I was going to clean up in the back by the garden. The pads are just completely overgrown right now. And and it's just, it just doesn't look very nice. <laughs> I haven't done anything major to the garden, so it's not so much the beds themselves. They're okay for, for what it's worth, and that's not saying a lot, but the paths were just, yeah. I'm just, I, I have a little bit, I have a little bit of pride when it comes to, you know, showing you my garden and, and not having the grass be this tall, but it will come by the end of August. It's going to be a tour. I'm going to show you what big changes have been happening. But anyways, so yeah, chili chat, chili and chat. So I'm in my back room here and it's it's fixing to, to really gully wash out there. The sky looks rather ominous and the heat is so oppressive. It's, I just kind of wanted to let go and then, you know, hopefully cool down a little bit. I know my friends over downstate New York were dealing with a hurricane and we didn't really get a big aftermath of that. We didn't get much of anything. It didn't, I think like the outer edge of the hurricane may have gotten through central New York near Syracuse. I think maybe as far west as Rochester, but um, didn't make it to Buffalo. Um, but the heat and the moisture that was ushered in with that storm system is, I'm definitely feeling it. I'm definitely feeling it here. Anyways, it's nice and cool in the house. Thank goodness for that. I'm in my lovely little back room, and this is where I kind of veg out. I, I you know, watch a little television. We'll listen to music. This is where this is kind of <laughs> those those who know me and have been here before will know this is kind of my corner. Okay, this is where I'm. I'm doing all my little projects, my little indoor projects. For example, 
right now um, I'm working on a hat, a knit cap, okay, so I've got some color work going on here on my circular needles, so I got to get that taken care of and a couple other things, but a nice little pottery job is to take care of these chilies, okay? I dry all of my chilies. I do not use them fresh, typically, unless I need them. What I'll do is I will leave whatever is green on the plant, kind of let it do its, let it, let the plant do its thing, let the chilies do its thing, but for the most part, I will dry them. Now, these have to continue drying, okay? There's still moisture in them, I can still feel, you can just tell by the feel of them that they're not completely dry, okay? The ends are getting dry, they're beginning to feel a little bit papery, okay? But there's still a lot more drying to do. So, instead of taking up all of the counter room, all right, in the kitchen, I'm going to string these up and then hang them somewhere in the kitchen to continue drying. And this is a really easy pottery job to do if you've got a bumper crop of chilies and you want to dry them. Super simple, okay? You're obviously going to need your chilies. And then all you need is a needle and thread, okay? Now I have some black thread on there. I thought I would go with a red thread for this. If anything happens with my microphone, okay, um, I apologize in advance because I'm having problems with like the transmitter portion of it because it's a wireless mic. So I had to plug the mic directly into the camera. <laughs> and the mic is currently clipped onto my pant leg. So, I'm going to be taking a really, really long piece of thread, okay? Because I still have chilies that I might want to thread onto this. I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of an insurance policy. Okay, quite simple. Take your needle and thread. You're gonna thread your needle and hopefully that, let's see, I'm usually pretty good at this. There we go. Easy peasy. If you're not, if you've, if, if that's something that's difficult for you, I would suggest getting a needle threader. Okay, this is just a bog standard needle. There isn't, it's not a large, it doesn't have a large eye on it. It's not terribly thick either. But what I like to do is double up the thread, okay? The more threads you have on this, the more secure it's going to be. Now, the chilies, as they dry, are going to become lighter and lighter as the moisture is expelled. But even still, I like to make sure that I have enough thread on here to keep it sturdy. Okay, so here's the needle end. All right, and here's the other end. And I'm just going to knot the other end. Okay, and you know what? I'm going to knot it twice just to make sure that the knot is extra big. Maybe I'll do it a third time. Okay, so. Let's take a look at this chili here. This is a, whoops, this is a nice one. <laughs> the thread gets, keeps getting caught. Okay, so. If you notice, I have the stem on the chili still, okay? That's really kind of important because that is where the, the needle is gonna go through. So I'm just gonna take my needle and I'm going to go through kind of the bottom end of the stem, okay? I'm looking at it right now and I apologize if I'm looking at you cross-eyed right now, okay? So I'm gonna send it through, go all the way to the bottom. Okay, and that's all it is. It's super easy. It's a nice puttery job that you can get on with. If the weather is nasty. And these, once they're threaded, just kind of fall into place, okay? You don't necessarily have to arrange them in any fashion. 
You might be asking, maybe it would be a good idea for you to wear gloves while doing this. But guess what my answer to that's going to be? I don't. Before I became a music teacher, I worked in food service for a long time. 13 years, maybe? So I have a general, I have a good idea working with hot foods on the precautionaries you should take, all right? Obviously, if you're doing something like this and you are concerned about being exposed to, um, you know, the hotness or any of the, you know, part of the pepper that may be hot, um, don't wipe your eyes unless you wash your hands, okay? Don't do anything <laughs> that has to do with touching yourself, your body, face, eyes, etc. until you wash your hands, okay? That typically goes for peppers that you've cut open. You know, if you touch the seeds and stuff like that. Pretty neat. <clears throat> so anyways, <clears throat> excuse me, a little chat. I have to tell you, it's a funny story now. It wasn't terribly funny when it happened, but it's a funny story anyways. I was telling you how I was going into the back and trying to get things all cut for drying. What did I get back there? I dried some zinnias. I just love, zinnias dry really, really well. I think I may have mentioned that in one of my other videos. They dry really, they, they don't obviously look as gorgeous as they would when, you know, you pick them fresh. But they do hold their integrity really, really well. They are quite stunning when they're dried. They kind of, they lose that brightness of color, but it becomes a little bit more dull and a little bit more, I don't know, I like to, to use the word like antique-y. <laughs> looks very, very much like, like antiques, like it's got that patina about it, okay? So I did that, and I know some of the flower heads were, you know, completely petalless and dry. So I picked those as well because I'm going to be saving the seeds for that. What else did I do? I did more lemon balm. I actually did quite a bit. There was a lot of volunteer lemon balm in the vegetable garden this year, so I made sure to get in there and harvest as much as possible. I'd like to do more of that next year. The main herb bed, herb bed that I have along the path heading into my garden, I've got to cut those earlier. I'm going to do a big chop back and see what I can get, but a lot of them have gone to flower and now they're going to seed and stuff like that. You really want to do that when the plants are young and preferably, preferably you go out and harvest, harvest earlier in the day on a dry day. Looking good. Kind of funny looking. I'm not really going for looks, I'm going for function. So anyways, what else did I get? Um, I did get some more mint and just regular run-of-the-mill um, mint and hmm I'm trying to remember I started harvesting some goldenrod I mean it looks beautiful it's yellow gorgeous yellow but goldenrod has medicinal qualities as well and I've done some reading on it ask me if I can remember what it's all about I can't honestly I can't remember what I read about goldenrod but I think it's you can make it into a tea or a salve or something like that. But honestly, I mean, right now it looks fabulous. I did finish harvesting the rest of my pathetic onions. Okay. They're super, super tiny, but they're still onions and I'm still going to use them. And it's really, I mean, it's, I, I live here alone. So if, if I want a small portion of onion, that's actually the perfect size for me. Okay, and then um, just some hydrangea blossoms. I'm going to dry those as well. They look really, really pretty when they dry. 
So, anyways, here's my story. I'm getting a little sidetracked. I went back there to do some harvesting, okay, for drying. And I was over by, like, the birdbath area. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> when out of nowhere, I was, like, dive-bombed by a cicada. Okay, a cicada. If you aren't familiar with cicadas, they are one of the bugs out there that make those summertime noises. And it's usually, you know if it's gonna be a really hot day by how loud the cicadas are. And they're an insect that hibernates in the ground for years. And when they emerge, they look like these scary little demons and they just climb up a tree and then they kind of anchor themselves on the tree and then their back, the back kind of splits open and then these huge flies come out. Okay. Well, I was dive bombed by a cicada in the garden and it was earlier in the day. So I, you know, I, I hadn't even had a proper cup of coffee or tea at that point. I wanted to get out early, but I had my shears in one hand and a whole bunch of cuttings in the other. Okay, so you, you can imagine, you know, I've got this big batch of cuttings and then I'm holding on to my shears with my right hand. This thing comes out of nowhere and dive bombs me and they're loud too, okay, and they have, <laughs> They are the most erratic flyers ever. So it's like they don't, they're not like, they're not like bees or hoverflies where like they have intention, you know what I mean? They're just kind of like, Pfft. so it dive bombed me, gave me a proper scare, freaked me out. And my gut reaction, of course, when something flies at me, and since I'm right-handed, was to do this. Jim should have dropped his shears because I gave myself a really, really good whack, okay? The shears that I have, or if, if you're British, I'm talking about like the secateurs, okay? Mine are curved at the end, okay? The blade curves. So <laughs> went like this and the point of the secateurs or the or the shears, I never I, I hit myself really, really hard inside my ear. Hmm. First of all, I heard this really loud pop and then nothing except for a really high pitched ring inside my ear. And then I mean the pain was excruciating because I really, I really like nailed the, the cartilage in, in my ear really, really hard. And then, and then I started bleeding all over the place and I don't do really well with blood. <laughs> it's not one of my favorite things in the world. So it was painful. I had a really, really, really bad headache. And so, I mean, I, and I couldn't touch it because it was just, it was so incredibly painful. I put a cold compress on it and I had to stem the bleeding because I was bleeding like a stuck peg. It was terrible. Um, and that really did me in for the rest of the day. So, I mean, that was really going to be get into the garden, get some stuff done. Didn't happen. And then sleeping, that was fun. Um, I usually sleep on my right side, so needless to say, I didn't get any sleep that night, but what's really awful and yet funny at the same time, I guess you could say, was this is, the, this is not the first time something like this has happened to me at this house. <laughs> the first time I was... My, my grandparents were still here. My, my grandparents were still living in this house. And I was, I used to do a lot of, of yard work for my grandfather when he was getting on 
and uh, age. I used to come over and, you know, cut the grass for him and do all these little odd jobs. So, if you guys recall, I don't know if you recall, if you've seen my video about the evolution of this, of my garden, at one point there used to be just one tiny bed. It started with one tiny bed. It was right next to the garage. And then right next to the garage were, you know, kind of this row of bushes. And behind the garage, there used to be the workshop that I, you know, then took down, collapsed myself. So the bushes that were on the side of the garage, my grandfather wanted me to uh, trim them. So and there wasn't, you know, this, <laughs> there wasn't a power tool, and I think I know where I get it, but there wasn't a power tool that my, my grandfather did not enjoy, okay? He always had lots of power tools, lots of interesting things. So I used his electric hedge clippers. So I'm just, you know, doing my thing, taking my time, and the window on the side of the garage had these shutters, these fake shutters, plastic or vinyl, whatever they were. And unbeknownst to me, there was a huge wasp's nest behind it, okay? Right behind the shutter against the house. So not knowing this, you know, I'm reaching over and, you know, trimming, 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 and I'm bumping up against the, whatchamacallit, the shutter, all of a sudden, masses of wasps and I'm not talking about like wasps wasps I'm talking about what we call in the states yellow jackets okay yellow jackets they're evil okay they are very aggressive and they're just they're just mean so these yellow jackets appear and swarm me and I'm freaking out and so <laughs> I've got my hedge clippers. I've got to give you a visual. So I'm, you know, doing my thing. These bees start coming out. I've got my hedge clippers still on and I'm, I'm waving them in the air. Okay. Like I'm going to cut them all, <laughs> you know, I'm going to slice them all and, and, you know, take care of it that way. Oh, I mean, that's ridiculous, right? That's just absolutely ridiculous. So I'm swinging it to and fro and, and, I may have been screaming just a little bit because I hate, I hate stinging, you know, aggressive little brats like yellow jackets. And so finally I take the hedge clippers in my left hand and I start doing this. Now I should have, should have dropped the hedge clippers and, you know, run in the opposite direction, run into the house, but no, not me. Holding the hedge clippers, they're on. I'm swatting back and forth. And then I decided that, well, I didn't decide it. My last big swat, I went like this onto the hedge clippers and I maimed my, my right hand. I've got these wonderful long scars on my fingers from, from that. So, <laughs> yeah, that's me for you. It's funny, I talked to my mom, I called her after it. I, you know, maimed my ear. And she's like, well, good grief, why didn't you just drop the, drop the shears? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think of things like that when, when I'm being attacked, okay? Oh my goodness. Anyways. So, my ear is still healing. It still hurts a lot, and luckily the headache is now gone, but um, it's, still, it's still pretty painful. So, moral of the story, friends, if anything decides to attack you, if insects decide to attack you, please drop whatever is in your hands. Please drop them. Don't go swatting at something when your hands are full. So this is moving fast. I'm really happy about that. I don't have very many more to do, which is wonderful. 
Now, how many of you out there do this with your chilies? I mean, I've really got, this is, this is just one variety too. These are the cayenne peppers. These are the cayenne peppers. I started them from seed back in January, February. The first time I've ever done chilies from seed. And they just, they turned out beautifully. I'm definitely, definitely gonna grow them every single year from seed from now on. Now I also have, I have a, a couple other peppers here. Um, the first one are these, these are jalapenos. Okay, and mostly when you see jalapenos, they're green. I let mine go red because they're a little bit on the sweeter side too. Now I'm not going to dry these. I will use these fresh, okay? Jalapenos tend to have a thicker skin or a th thicker wall, I should say, thicker flesh, okay? So they don't dry as well. Um, and if you don't have them in a really cool and dry place, they might just start to disintegrate which is no good, but you know, I can put these on sandwiches and things like that and they're absolutely gorgeous. And then <clears throat> the other kind that I grew was that Big Jim. I don't know if you recall, it's the big hot pepper. And those actually dry really, really well. So once I'm done harvesting all of my Big Jims, I'm going to do, I'm gonna give it its own little drying thread. Yes. Sorry, someone just texted me. So, really, really nice job to get on with here. If you don't feel like going out into the garden, if the weather is not good, this is a great job for you to get on doing indoors, and that way you don't feel guilty about not getting on with things outside. What's really sad to me is that the, now I'm going to give you the garden tour, obviously, um, by the end of August, but the next Saturday video, come on now, there we go. I think the next Saturday video that I'm going to be sending you, I'm going to be back to school. Oh, back to school I go. Yep. Our first few days are just staff development. So we go in, just the teachers go in, we sit through meetings and we get our rooms prepared and, and things like that. And then we don't actually see the kids until after Labor Day. Okay, I think that's September the 6th this year or around there. So I, I kind of like that we're kind of easing our way back into the school year instead of going back and then boom, the kids are back and, and then we've got to, you know, it's uh, nose to the grindstone right away. So I'm just, I'm a, I'm a little concerned about, the, the heat has been so bad this month I'm really hoping that we get just a little bit of a cool off. Even just the slightest bit would be such a big help because our classrooms do not have air conditioning um, and it really becomes oppressive in there after a while. And, you know, we're professionals. We don't wear t-shirts and, and shorts to work. So I'm hoping that the September cools off a little bit I can't believe I'm saying that because I do love summer. I do love the heat of summer, but it's completely different when you're at home and in your garden or, you know, you can go to the beach, etc. It's a little bit different. All right. I am down to, come on. I just want to make sure that when you're threading this through, you really get into the meat of that stem. You don't want to just kind of graze the side of the stem because then as it dries, um, it'll likely fall off. So I'm going, like I said, right at the base, right where it's the juiciest. There we go. All right. 
right. And here we go. Doesn't that look pretty? So, I think what I'm going to do, I think this is long enough. I really don't, I'm not going to add any to this. Yeah. I think this is long enough. So, then what I'm going to do, let's see. I'm going to cut the needle off. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to knot a big loop here at the end. Let's see if I can do this without ruining my work. Now this can be placed, you can hang this up somewhere cool and dry. And not only is it gonna look fabulous in your kitchen, okay, but then once everything is dry, you could either leave it on here and then just pick them off as you need them. That works just fine. Or you can just take the lot off and grind them up as you need them. If you want to leave them whole, you can put them into mason jars. Um, obviously you don't need to like process them like you would, you know, canned food. But um, yeah, I mean, what I do typically, I will leave these on until they're paper dry and then I will grind them up. I have a food processor, seeds and all. Um, but usually what I'll do first is I will grab the seed that I need, okay? Now, for this, I've, grew, I've grown several different types of chili, chilies this year. So I'm thinking that I'm not going to keep the seed for this. I'm going to buy fresh seed or see if I have some more seeds left over from last year because I interplanted these with a lot of different hot peppers and there's probably a lot of cross-pollination happening and... I don't want to expect to grow a cayenne pepper and then it comes out some kind of strange thing. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but grind the whole thing. You want to take the stem off, take the very top off of it, pop it off, grind down the whole thing, and then you can store it somewhere cool and dry and you can add them to all sorts of delicious dishes, sprinkle it on pizza and pasta and things like that. So yeah. So this wasn't really a chat as it was more of a story hour, I guess. <laughs> oh my goodness. So fingers crossed, next is going to be the August tour. Um, I will show you, you know, everything is, is in a bit of a transition right now. My squash, pretty much all of my squash plants have kicked the bucket. Okay, powdery mildew, uh, squash vine borer, things like that. Getting that cleaned up, cleaned out. Those beds are going to be turned over. Most of them have been turned over already. Tomatoes, I'm still <sighs> harvesting them. And uh, the, the blight has, has, has taken a hold on certain plants, but not others, which is very interesting. And then I'm going to be showing you what's going on in the tunnel and also the seedlings that I had planted for my fall crops. So I'm looking forward to that. And I hope you guys aren't too shocked as to what you're going to see. But if you recall last year at this time, I, I pretty much gave up on life. Okay. You guys didn't see a video from me for quite some time. And the garden was, you know, pretty much done at this point last year. And I'm it's not done yet. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna ramp up some other things. If if we have a warm autumn this year, then I, I suspect that I'm going to be getting a lot more in the way of crops, which I'm really happy about. Um, if it cools down, there's always you know your salad crops and things like that. I can continue planting those, etc. 
But that's going to be for our next video. I'm not sure when that's going to be out. It might be this Monday. It might be on Wednesday. But we'll see. But until then, friends, I hope you're well. I hope you are getting on with big, big harvests. I hope things are looking really great for you. Hope you're enjoying a lot of this seasonal deliciousness as I have. And next time when we see each other, we'll be back in the garden. Take care, everybody. Oh, I have to say, last thing, so sorry. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell, hit your thumbs up, and please leave your comments. I did get back to a lot of people. I still have more to do, but I did get back to a lot of people from the comments, so yes. That's it, guys. All right, I'm going to go now. <laughs> going to go hang these chilies up and make them look all pretty in my, my little blue and white willow ware kitchen. So take care. I'll see you all very soon. So long. Thank you.